that a man deeply loves you. So the next sign that he deeply loves you is he is not talking a lot about other women when he's with you. So he's going to be more focused on you directly. He's going to want to get to know you, and he's not going to be mentioning or even uh, looking around around other women. He's going to start to be focusing his energies specifically on you. So you may not even catch him thinking about anything else related to you and your relationship with him. He's going to ask you questions like we mentioned before, but he's also going to be focusing his attention. He's not going to be looking so much at his phone. He's not going to be uh, talking about other people as much. He's going to be focused on what are our plans? What are you doing together? And what is the adventures that you could start engaging on as a couple? And of course, part of the reason why he's not, you know, not talking about other women is because he also has like a high level of self-confidence, right? So sometimes men talk about other women because they kind of feel insecure and body chime in there. That's your totally your territory, right? Um, male psychology, but um, but it's also because they kind of like feel like they want to prove themselves, right? Be like, oh, see, I have like other women who are interested in me, you know, and just kind of like this peacock kind of, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, um, but when you deal with a man who's really emotionally invested into you, you're mostly dealing with someone who's emotionally secure and an emotionally secure man doesn't really have to prove anything to anyone, right? An emotionally secure man is also naturally a little bit more self-rotating than other rotating, meaning he's not going to get caught up in like talking about other people and other stories and other things, right? Because he's able to hold his own energy container. Exactly, exactly. We have a great question from Lois who said, who asked, what does it mean when someone can't look at you in the eye? He looks straight forward while on the couch. What I would say is if a guy can't look at you in the eye, if you're having conversations with him and he's looking elsewhere, he's not really giving you his direct attention and focus. It's one of either two things. The first thing is he's insecure. He's a guy who doesn't have a lot of confidence. He has a hard time engaging with people. Oftentimes, even guys who are on the Asperger spectrum can have a really hard time look at you in, looking at you in the eye. You can watch movies like Rain Man or The Big Short to kind of see examples of this. But it's either one of those things. He has a social issue. He has a hard time connecting. He has a hard time being present. Or he is, like we said before from our first example, not really interested in you. Because if he was really interested, he would be giving you his full attention. He would want to be hearing every word that you're saying, hanging on every word, of course, within reason. but he's going to be focused on you and he's going to want to know what you're saying so he can make sure he receives that communication, implements it and utilizes it to benefit you and the relationship. That's going to be his priority if he deeply cares. So it's going to be one of those two big options. Brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, additionally to that, you know, I also teach about five different energy types, right? And one energy type is the more disassociated energy types so that just experience certain trauma at a certain development stage in their life and definitely within the first six years of their life and um so that like just more disassociated right and then of course you have to ask yourself well you know would i enjoy long term being trauma or not trauma meaning like this has been his fault intentional or not intentional is that a compliment for me you know what i mean or do you really need somebody who can connect you know, this may not be the right energy constitution for you if you are a true connector, right? Like I personally could not be with an energy constitution like that, you know, but someone else like may uh, some other energy constitution may actually really love that a lot, right? So you just have to really ask yourself, how does that make you feel, Louise or Lois? Um, and you know what I mean? Is that sort of a match? You know, does that complement how you communicate? Totally. We have another question here from Jennifer who said, what about in a long distance relationship? Is that the same thing? Oops. Well, Let's I don't know here. exactly uh, what we're talking about. Are we still talking yeah, about? Yeah, I, I think she's talking about the signs that a man deeply loves you if it's the same in a long-term relationship versus a long distance relationship versus in close uh, in-person relationship a short distance relationship. So um, what I would say is 
The difference between a man deeply loving you in a short distance versus a long distance relationship is that he's going to put in the effort, he's going to put in the time to make sure he's connecting with you. So there isn't much difference between the two. Of course, long distance, you can expect a little bit more time, likely in between communications, a little bit more space because you physically are apart. You have to account for that. Now, when he is reaching out to you, when he is communicating, look for the quality of his communication. Like we said before, is he asking you deep questions? Is he wanting to hear how you've been, what you've been up to? Is he authentically curious? Does he ask follow-up questions? For example, you share what you did that day and he asks you more questions about that. Like, how did that make you feel? Or what happened after that? Or, you know, what else is going on with that situation? He'll ask specifics around it, but look for the quality of his interaction with you. Of course, it may not be as frequent as if you were in short, short distance with each other, but it's more about the quality. And of course, he should be reaching out to you. He should be having conversations with you or, or texting, you know, every a couple of days, ideally, but it depends on your specific situation. But those are some of my initial uh, thoughts and suggestions with that. Do you have anything yeah, to share, Shani? And, you know, I get this quite a bit, right? And I don't understand why there should be a difference. You know what I mean? Because why would the emotional investment have anything to do with the distance? You know what I mean? I would say, if anything, like the men would be more demonstrative, right? Because he can't show it so much like in person all the time. So it would show... Ex up even more in him even asking more questions right or or sharing more of like a central experience or you know allowing you to partake in his like everyday life uh on a more regular basis right because that's all what you guys have you can't meet all the time in person right so i would say if anything it would be even stronger with a long distance relationship mm. if you deal with a secure man you know what i mean of course if you deal with an avoid man who kind of almost like conveniently welcomes the situation of distance to make excuses that he, you know, he can talk to you every day and he can't do all these things all every day. Um, that would be different, right? But that doesn't have something to do for long distance because that would also ultimately show up if he was like living next door. Totally. Yeah, that's great. And we have another question here from Yana who said, okay, this person I've been with lately, since the incident happened, I distance myself whenever I'm in the soccer training session. I always catch him looking at me. And this one time I took my bracelet off since we both have a couplet bracelet, couple bracelet. He always looks at my hand and I don't know if he still has feelings for me. He's just confusing. So it sounds like you got a couple bracelet together. Um, it sounds like you guys are loosely dating. I would like to know more of the specifics as far as uh, if you guys are in a relationship, if you're just kind of been seeing each other, friends with benefits kind of situation, um, catch him looking at me. Look, look, we, we don't know what incident you're talking about, Yana. So we need a, we need just a little bit. Maybe you were writing something before or maybe you're, you're talking about a post that you did. on okay. Like, we don't know what you wrote there. So whatever the incident was, maybe you can fill us in there a little bit because I can't follow along. I don't know how to help you right now because I don't even understand the situation. Yeah, what I would say is if you catch a guy frequently looking at you, that is a clear sign of interest. Now, if you had a past relationship with a guy and he's constantly putting himself around you, he's constantly maybe sending you little messages, even if they don't seem like he's romantically interested, He's interested still. He still has a connection if he's engaging with you in that way. Of course, you don't want to make up stories and tell yourself things that aren't true and have fantasies about him still wanting a relationship with you if he's not doing those things or if he's just kind of doing those things. But if you definitely catch him being in your proximity, he's around you often, he's looking at you often, he's sending you things, talking to you often, it's probably a sign he still has an emotional connection. I'm not saying that he wants a relationship with you still or again, but it's a good sign that he's directing his energy towards you. And there's a high chance that he is still having some emotional connection to you. So that's what I would say with that. Um, we have another question here from Stephanie who says, what does it mean if he constantly looks at my lips while talking? If a guy's constantly looking at your lips while you're talking, it's definitely a good sign that he's at least having some attraction for you. It doesn't necessarily mean he has an attachment emotionally, but there's definitely some physical attraction there. You will see that all the time in movies and they call it the triangle gaze when a man or a woman is looking at you going from eye to eye to mouth to eye to eye to mouth, you'll see that oftentimes in shows and movies when someone's about to kiss 
somebody else. They're about to lean in for the kiss or you can tell they want the kiss. It's an attraction sign. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a long or a deep emotional connection with that. So don't confuse the two when you see that from a man. Do you have anything to say with that? Share with that, Shnuggy? I mean, the same. I was just kind of like um, telling Stephanie, I think, right? Yep. He's kind of like almost like visually rehearsing what it's like to kiss you. You know what I mean? So his his mind is probably not <laughs> following the words um, that you're speaking, but he is probably some other visuals in mind. Yeah, we had uh, Linda said there's some reverb. So um, I'm going to try adjusting the mic settings, but let us know in the uh, uh, in the chat if that helps with uh with anything here um yeah we're trying to to fix that make sure the audio is good um so brandy said is it okay to propose to a man um so let me see here so is it okay to propose to a man well it depends on what kind of relationship you want with the man if you want a relationship where you're the one who has to constantly make all the decisions take things to the next level Tell him what to do. Make sure that the things are progressing. Make sure that the the doors get fixed. The spider gets killed when it's invading your bedroom. The intruder gets shot if somebody's coming into your house. Then by all means, propose to a demand. Because what you're basically doing in this situation is you are saying, I'm the man in this relationship. I wear the pants. So again, that's maybe for you. Maybe be the kind of relationship that you want. Now, if you don't want a relationship like that, if you want the man to invest in, to provide, to protect for you, to protect over the relationship and over you, and be doing all the things that perhaps you may want men to do, such as uh, fixing things for you, opening the door, leading the relationship, taking things to the next level, uh, planning out the dates, paying for the dates, et cetera, et cetera, then you want to make sure you are not initiating in that way and allowing the man to do those things, which means becoming the magnetic radiant you that we typically teach in all of our tr trainings to magnetize a man to you and get him to propose to you. 100%. Do you have anything to share with that, Shnuggy? Uh, well, what's the name again? Uh, Brandy. Brandy. Oh, Brandy. So, you know, one thing you may want to ask yourself, like, where's that thought coming from? Like, why do I want to propose to the man, right? Is it's, I think it's not moving fast enough or are they not moving at all? Is the story unless you make something happen nothing happens, right? That would come from a place of mistrust, right? Uh, not trusting the flow, not trusting the man, uh, potentially not trusting yourself. So there's always like more to the story. Like if you actually really look like, why, why do I want to propose to a man? Ultimately, it goes back to a sense of worthiness, right? Because it's almost like saying, well, you know, obviously, I'm not worthy that a man would propose to me because otherwise, why would you ask that question, right? So therefore, I need to propose to him and kind of like make him. Now, the other interesting question you want to ask yourself, Brandy, is, well, am I not sending congruent signals enough, right? Because why do I feel like I need to propose to him? Is there maybe a story? I don't know. We don't know your background at all. Uh, but is there maybe a story where you say, well, I don't know if I send a signals clearly enough. Like, I don't know if I sent the green flags um, enough that he actually knows that I'm like ready for that level of commitment. You know what I mean? And so therefore, I need to propose to him so that he knows that I'm ready for that level of commitment. Now, if that's the case, then you want to ask yourself, like, what keeps you from sending congruent signals? What's that part inside of you where you want to keep yourself safe or where you want to avoid disappointment or rejection or abandonment or, or a sense of embarrassment um, in any way, shape or form. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it's basically, yeah, looking where that question is coming from. I love, I love what you said with that. Um, so great question, Brandy, appreciate it. And some good inquiries to come from that. Um, and now let's get another question here. We have a question from Tina who said, do you guys do private sessions? Yes, actually we do. Well, Antia does. And uh, so if you'd like to see if you can qualify for a private session with Antia, I would highly recommend first off taking our free quiz, which you can get by going to getlovequiz.com. Getlovequiz.com. You can go to it after this live session or go to it now if you want. We have a whole virtual 
a quiz and virtual coaching session you can do with us there for free. And then depending on your answers, if you qualify, you may have the opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one complimentary session with Antia as well. So I'd highly recommend checking that out. Um, it's definitely for only a select you know, type of woman and women who could really go deep and are really ready for deep transformation. So I'd recommend taking that quiz to see what that could be for you. We have another question from Dardar who says, cool name. <laughs> what does it mean when you always catch a guy looking at you in the eye? I always see this guy in my peripheral vision looking at me. And why is he so random? Whenever we're in a circle, his body posture is towards to me. Um, yeah. So we kind of mentioned this before. What I would say is if a guy is looking at you in the eye, it's definitely a sign of interest. If he's looking at you from your periphery, it's definitely a sign of interest. It doesn't necessarily mean a deep emotional connection, but it it likely means he has some attraction and interest in you. So it's a good sign to be aware of. Now, the other part of your question was whether he's in a circle. So the other thing is if he's showing his body language, if he's moving his body towards you and facing you directly, again, that's a great sign of interest, attraction, and he's probably going to be engaging you soon as well. If he hasn't approached you, it's likely a sign he's going to approach you. Or he might just be one of these insecure guys who's feeling a little, uh, maybe being a little creepy and just looking at you, focusing on you, but not willing to do anything about that. So hopefully that's not the case, but that could be a good sign with that. So I uh, hope that helps. Welcome, Brandy. Welcome, Sheen. Okay, here's another question we have from Mammy. Mammy says, hello, this guy gets to know me through a friend of mine. He texted me telling me that he is interested in me, but the thing is that he is far away. Somehow he texts me every day when he isn't flirting. He always asks me how I am doing and how my day was. At the moment, I don't know what to do. Could you please tell me what I should do? I really appreciate your advice and thanks. Do you want to answer that one, Shungi? Uh, so Marnie, I think it's Marnie. And Mammy. it looks like very it's similar Mammy. to, to Mammy. Um, maybe Marnie can tell us. But it sounds like he has a parts conflict inside of himself, right? And I don't know if he's asking you to solve his parts conflict. Sometimes guys do that. And I don't even know how you're supposed to, you know, solve that parts conflict. But it almost feels like he's kind of putting the, bur the burden on you, right? Like to say, hey, like I am interested in you, but there is this long distance and I can't work it out myself. So I just want to let you know, it's not like that I'm doing something about it. And this is, again, something that's totally in Brody's um, wheelhouse, right? But it's more like I just want to let you know, right? So I can kind of feel better about myself almost. Like that's what it feels like to me because why else would he mention it, right? Like unless he's like thinking about, well, so the solutions that I'm thinking about are whatever, you know, that maybe could meet halfway or whatever the case may be because, you know, what you don't want to happen, I think it's Marnie, but you say it's Mammy, um, is that he's going to sort of like use it as an excuse, like to, you know, just keep you at bay, right? Because there's like this long distance. And I have a couple of women in my program right now who are going through the similar situations where the man is like sort of saying, yeah, I am attracted to you, but you know, there's like this long distance, right? And, but it's also like really convenient, right? Because that way they can get sort of like their emotional fix. Because remember, when you deal with sort of a dismissive avoidant attachment style, they want to get there, it's still there, they still want to get their fix emotionally, right? But they want to have some distance because it makes them feel safer. So if that's the case, and you know, of course, I recommend, depending on what you're actually looking for, to rather disengage from this conversation because his words will exceed his actions by far, right? And what that means is that you're going to get, you know, I'm mean, so disappointed and get let down because you put so much emphasis and so much hope on his words and what he says that he's attracted to you, but then the actions of him not coming to, to you, not driving towards you or flying towards you or, you know, pursuing you is um, also there. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, yeah, you want to avoid being caught in situations where a man is stringing you along and breadcrumbing you. He might have interest, but unless he backs it up with actions, he's not really that interested. He's not really that committed. You can put a sand in the line and say something like, I would love to continue getting to know you, but I really prefer to have a relationship in person. Any, any plans you may have for visiting wherever you live in the near future. And if he says no, then it's probably a good sign. Say, okay, great. Maybe we can just be, you know, be friends and continue it at some point when that may be possible. 
Or if he says yes, of course, then you can say, okay, great. You know, let me know when you're coming over or, or what, you know, let me know when the dates are that you'll be in the area. I'd love to meet up with you and we can talk more then. That way you avoid getting into pen pal situations where you can get strung along. There's also a lot of scammers that will use this tactic to keep you on the hook when they're not really the guy that they pretend to be online and they keep trying to message you and build this connection without ever even having a video call with you, let alone meeting you in person. So you want to avoid being scammed. This is a good tactic for women listening to this as well by cutting the pen pal situation pretty early on. So that's what I'll say with that. Um, hello, Sheen. Hello, uh, T. Uh, who else was here? Um, Linda, Isaac, Jennifer. So yes, so anyone else wants to post a question, we are opening this up for more questions. And we're going to share it on the signs that a man deeply loves you or any other struggles you're having with in your love life right now. While we're waiting for another question here, I'm going to answer another sign that a man deeply loves you, which is that he doesn't call you or treat you like a friend or a buddy. So if a man is treating you like a friend or a buddy in the sense that he calls you things like dude or hey, or, or like uh, hey buddy or hey friend, he's not really treating you with the respect that an, a quality attractive woman deserves in the sense of addressing you as something more proper like my lady <laughs> or, or miss. Did you say my lady? <laughs> <laughs> um, my lady <laughs> but he's treating you more with respect of like a female that he's interested in so he's opening doors for you he is uh, protecting you he's the one who's standing on the outside of the street rather than the inside of the street when you're walking down the street together he is not letting somebody go up to you or a strange animal without putting himself in between you because he wants to protect you as opposed to a buddy who's just kind of like who cares you know we're just hanging out we're just friends now, the other situation with that is he's not committing. He's not taking action to make it a real relationship. He's creating a friends with benefits situation in the sense of there's it's just all casual. It's all good. You know, we're just getting to know each other. Who needs to like really, you know, monogamy is so outdated, things like this. That's another sign that he's not really that interested in you on a deep level. He's not deeply caring about you because he's not willing to treat it like a real relationship. He's treating it, treating it more like a friendship. Do you have anything to say on that? Antia? It's so interesting when you call me Antia. You know, just like total. <laughs> I'm trying to like, keep it proper so people know that we're, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, who are, who we're speaking to. If you were to, to say Schnucky, it would be like really using, weird. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are pet names. <laughs> um, but yeah, 100%, you know, it's just like, you can just kind of feel it. If it's like more built on polarity or if it's just like, you know, kind of comments like what you were already saying, Brody, right? But like, you know, just, you know, I just, love to start with friendship but you know i love to start it slow and all these kind of things you know brody never told me something like that you know he started it slow but he didn't say that you know what i mean and he still told me that i'm the girl of his story so it's very clear i'm the girl of his story not just like a person it's wonderful to meet another loving person right it's also sort of like another sort of like general term so language by the way communicates a lot about the unconscious sort of like expectation and a sort of like image that um, a man or a woman for that matter has of the relationship, right? So you want to be paying attention to, you know, is he using very specifically, specific words um, like my girl or, or woman or something like that, right? Or, you know, as opposed to just like people or a person or like the examples that I just brought, you know what I mean? Because then it's just sort of like, yeah, you could just be a person. Like maybe I'm. we're just going to have a beautiful spiritual relationship. You know what I mean? Like God wanted us to be together to heal something on a friendship level. So there's this kind of way of like creating some artificial distance. You know what I mean? So yeah, just kind of to add on to what you, what you already said, Brody. Yeah, that's great. And we have another question here from Joe Helka. Why will a guy not tell you when things are not working out or cut the relationship? Is that like the most asked question I get all the time? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to take this first? Sure. Yeah. You know, so, you know, why question is always great because you never get an answer, Joe Halka, right? So, but, um, you know, so one aspect is, and of course, Brody is like the expert in male psychology, but it's. Um, conf um, avoidance of confrontation, right? So, you know, it's kind of, 
ironic, right? But in that moment, the man doesn't want to be the bad guy, right? And then actually by not wanting to be the bad guy, he becomes the bad guy. But like, you know what I mean? He doesn't want to feel the impact of being the bad guy. Because if he was to tell you, you know what, Johalka, I just really love loved connecting with you. But, you know, it just, I don't feel it romantically. He doesn't want to want to feel your disappointment, you know, because it's going to make him feel bad about himself. So therefore, he's just going to cut it off, right? Of course, another reason could be that, you know, it depends on if it's short-term ghosting or long-term ghosting, I call it, right? Because if it's if it's more short-term ghosting, it could also be that he just got distracted by other things, you know, and it was just like not that important to him. And he was he's committed to other things, to work or maybe another woman or, or some other life circumstance that's just takes more of his um, attention, right? Now, that would usually kind of like show a little bit more of an avoidant tendency, right? Like, because that's more avoidant people who would like start to disassociate and, and like kind of like with no warning, with like no acknowledgement. So you're looking for the acknowledgement, right? So if there's no acknowledgement, there's usually some avoidant, tendency in there and the reason why is because the dismissive avoidant attachment style like doesn't want you to rely on them right so they don't have the story that they, they owe you anything they don't owe you an explanation uh, you also don't owe them an explanation by the way right so they're just kind of like we're on our own you know what i mean everybody just does as they're pleased let's say fair you know what i mean and hopefully it works out you know what i mean so there's like no accountability um and no emotional availability Yes. So what I would say about that is the reasons why a guy won't tell you when things aren't going well, or he won't even cut off the relationship is for a lot of the same reasons that Antje said is generally because he feels like he doesn't want to have confrontation with you. He feels like it would be also risking losing you because here's the thing, avoidant guys and guys who are more playboy type guys or guys that aren't really committing emotionally unavailable. They like to have women on a string. Generally, he likes to have the option of coming back to you. He, but he doesn't know he may be out trying to meet new women, going on Tinder messaging, trying to get something going with somebody else, but he doesn't want to actually risk losing you. So even though he feels like it's not going to work out with you, the relationship isn't really great. It's not a great relationship potential. He may not cut off with you because he doesn't want to lose that option. So that's why it's generally best for you to really cut it off when a guy isn't committing to you or he isn't really taking the steps to treat it like a serious relationship rather than keeping your hope up that he's going to come back to you and suddenly commit because likely he won't. Likely he's just not that into you. He's just keeping you on a string. He wants a friends with benefits or he wants the option and he's not actually looking at it as a serious relationship. So you want to avoid getting caught in that trap. Cut the trail of breadcrumbs, like vacuum them up, throw them away, and don't get caught in those situations that are losing, allowing you to lose your ability to actually attract a healthy, happy relationship. Because as long as you're energetically tied to a man, it's going to be hard for a new man to come into the picture who actually is a better fit for you, who actually is someone you're more attracted to, and that you can actually have a great relationship with. So stop getting caught in those energetic ties that are not serving you. But there's sure. also like two other ones that I forgot about, Puffy. One is that um, if, a, if a man has like a conflict inside of himself that he can't solve, mm -hmm. guess what? Like if, if there's a conflict, eventually it just, it can go into complete neutral, right? Neutral meaning like complete avoidance because the, the system goes into overload and into overwhelm. And so at some point the system has to shut down because the conflict causes so much tension inside of himself, right? So if he's like, you know, he loves certain aspects of you, but he also loves being single or like maybe he doesn't want to risk getting hurt again or maybe he lost his dad at a young age. Who knows? I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, so it could be so many different things and he just doesn't know how to deal with the conflict. And then what happens is eventually um, it, it just it just goes into shutdown, right? It goes into complete shutdown mode. Now, the other piece maybe that I forgot to mention is if there's a lack of transparency in the relationship. Now, and this is actually what I found the most to be true with the women that I work with, in addition to the parts conflict, is that the woman is not able to create a transparent environment 
from the get-go. No? And what I mean by that is oftentimes so the women that come to me have like an emotionally unavailable parent that they grew up with or even an abusive, narcissistic parent, right? I mean, I personally have a narcissistic mom and so on, right? And then because of that, they have like this expectation, like what an emotional environment looks like or doesn't look like, right? So they aren't necessarily leading with vulnerability in the beginning. You know what I mean? That could be like, even like from the first day, just sharing like, hey, I just, you lost me. I didn't even know where we were, right? So they're like, they're going into into some sort of like performance mode, right? Because they don't want to... Um, rock the boat right so they continue to be in this for performance mode like i don't actually know anymore where the man was but i didn't want to interrupt him now because that would be rude and that would be weird and i don't want him to think this or that or the other right or you know i would speak up so maybe speaking up is not safe that's an unconscious belief that you may have right but because what happens is it causes a disconnect because the man can actually sense from the first date on something happening like something is like Okay, something is weird, kind of a little off or something. Okay, let's see how it goes with the next date and so on, right? And he continues to feel that something is off and eventually it's kind of fizzles out, right? So that could also be a case where you were handing him a resume that you're like not as authentic and transparent as you want him to be. And that was certainly the case for me when I was dating and a coach called me out on that in front of like probably a hundred you know, quality men uh, at like a workshop, of course, it always happens that way, right? I'm like, thanks, you know what I mean? Um, but you know what? The funny part was in the break of that workshop, I had so many men approach me, right? So I broke through my belief that, oh, I she had something vulnerable. I led with vulnerability. I was very transparent and authentic. And uh, that's attractive. Like, what is happening? You know what I mean? So that can also happen because what happens is if you're not able to create a transparency and authenticity from the beginning, then when something comes up for the man, right? Like maybe a running part, like a part of him that gets scared in a relationship has no room to express itself because you haven't set the environment for it, right? You haven't set the, the stage for it, so to say. So there's no room for him to other son say, uh, he's already like, okay, this is the kind of relationship I'm in. Um, I can't say stuff like that. And he's not even aware of it. It's almost like he's like not aware of it. He's unconscious of it because it was never expressed by you. And so therefore it was never highlighted and because it was never recognized by him. And so therefore it can never be repeated by him. So that's also another reason that a lot of women are never ever thinking about, but I see this all the time where they're actually you know, because I see how they communicate. I'm like, is that how you communicate on your first date? You probably communicated that it's not safe to express emotions and be honest and authentic in the relationship. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. Um, yeah, you want to help a man to feel safe to open up and be honest with you in that way by you being vulnerable and by you being in alignment with yourself that you feel congruent, that you are congruent, that you no longer have your own parts conflicts of, do I really want a relationship or do I not want a relationship? Uh, I'm not sure. So now I'm attracting men who also kind of want a relationship, but also don't want a relationship. So you have to be congruent within yourself first to make sure you're in alignment for that happy, long-term loving, supportive, committed relationship with the man you want and not sending out mixed signals to the universe in that way and to men in that way. Um, we have a really good question here from um, Trista, uh, how should you handle it if a man has a roster slash multiple women he is dating? Should you join the roster or move on? Now, what I'll say about this is a lot of highly desired men who are single, they do have a roster most likely. It's There's a statistic out there that on online dating sites, it's only about 10% of the men get like 80% of the matches on uh, online dating sites. It's not, the, the reverse is not necessarily true for women. So very attractive, desired, put together, high value men, they typically have a lot of options. So now that leaves you with options. Do you wanna become another woman on his roster or friends with benefits situation that he's just sleeping with? Or do you want to have a long-term loving committed relationship? Now you can attract that man, you can get a relationship with him if you use the techniques and the principles 
that we are teaching. If you don't, you're likely going to just stay a woman on his roster. Eventually, he's going to lose interest, and you're not even going to be on his roster anymore, most likely. The other option is if you say, no, that's not the kind of situation I want, and you're very clear on that, meaning you're raising your standards, you're becoming a high-value woman, you're becoming a queen, where you say, no, I do not accept friends with benefits situations because that's for a woman who is worth less value-wise, or not worth less, I don't want to say worth less, but not as high a value as me. I'm a queen. I get a committed quality relation with the kind of man that I want. You say no to that situation, and then by default, you're saying yes to attracting a man who you will have that with, a man who is not just putting you on a roster, but is going to commit to you, get married to you potentially if that's what you want, and treat you like his queen because that's who he sees you as. So it's a big inner shift if that's what you actually want to create. Mm. I'm sure Auntie has a lot of good stuff to share about that. I love the word should. You know, should I? Well, I don't know. You shouldn't do anything. You know what I mean? So first of all, it's like, why are you living to somebody else's value system? which is whoever that should is, you know, whoever tells you what you should do. So first of all, never outsource, you know what I mean? Like your desire, right? And so you really want to feel into, ah, you know, I call it sort of the queen, you know, Brody has like the king um, in his like archetypal system, right? But like the queen, I just like, if you tap into the queen, right? The queen is that part inside of you that is heartfelt, who's very compassionate. She's not judgmental. However, she's also self-compassionate. So you really want to ask yourself, you know, what's the self-compassionate answer here, right? Meaning if I was my own best friend, you know, what would I tell my best friend? My very best friend, like my most precious jewel that when I see my best friend, I just like jump up and down with screaming so loud that everybody around us is like, what is happening? You know what I mean? Did, did something just, you know what I mean? Did they just tell each other they got pregnant at the same time or something? What's going on? You know, that kind of friend, right? If you were that kind of friend to yourself that you're so excited about hanging out with on a regular basis, like what would you tell yourself? And then the other part of the queen, if you're stepping into your queen, is the boundaries. Just really identifying for yourself, Trista, what are your no's? What are your clear no's? Not like what somebody should, you know, this, the queen is self-focused, right? She's compassionate towards other people, but she's not asking what somebody else thinks and makes a decision based on that, right? But rather, she's like, right? Like, I'm just coming in a line, grounded inside of myself, right? Becoming true to myself. And what are my boundaries, right? So my boundary may be, I'm going on a date with him, but I'm not going to get physically involved until we're clear that we're exclusive. That could be one way, right? So you can really identify what is my boundary. My boundary is, you know what? I may meet him like once a week. That's that's all he gets as long as he's dating endless amounts of women. And you know what I mean? Figures out his circus I almost wanted to say you know what I mean so you can really say hey not my circus not my monkeys you deal with all your monkeys and then you come on back right when you're clear on that that could be also you look I'm not going to tell you what the answer is because when you tap into your queen then you actually discover what the answer is mm, beautiful I love that not my circus, not my monkeys. You can go monkey around with all your little play playgirls. And then once you're ready to leave the circus and have a queen in your life, high value relationship, then come back to me. That's really uh, a good frame. I like it. Um, so let's get another question here. Um, Kimberly says, if a man is in love with you, isn't it natural for them wanting to spend more time with you physically and the blending of both lives and more. Um, well, I would say there's like something underneath that, Kimberly, that is bothering you right now. So my assumption is, and you can, of course, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, either this particular gentleman is like physically not so hot about you or something is physically inconsistent about this, right? 
or you feel like there's something that's not moving forward. And I would say in general, and I mean, Bodhi, you will definitely add on to this, right? Is that I would say short term, I could see, um, you know, I've seen men who get uh, physically short term, like very nervous because it means so much for them. I've, I've seen this authentically. Um, it means so much to them that they have like problems to actually get aroused because they're almost like so emotionally connected that they get locked physically, right? Now, Brody would be like a total expert to ask on this. Like, I'm actually curious to hear Brody's answer on that. Um, so I've seen that. And then the man warms up and it just kind of balances, right? He's able to, his animal part, because we need the animal part to be activated, right? For to the arousal to occur. Now, I don't know if that's even relevant to your question, but I'm just going to say that, right? Um, so there has to be sort of like this, like, okay, that's the emotional piece. Yes. And connecting that with the um, animal piece. And then the other pieces uh, is actually seeing, yeah, is there like a stalling happening? I don't know, Kimberly, right? Like how long have you been seeing it? There's a lot of background information that we don't know, right? But I would say in general, it may be a, a slow process, but usually it's a consistent forward moving progress when the man is a, into you, right? But I, this is a, a fantastic question for Bodhi. Yeah, so I would say what I assume is that if he has said he loves you, yet he is not backing that up with actions, it's either there's a couple options of what could be going on. The first that came to mind for me is that he actually is pumping the brakes a bit. So he feels that whenever he actually engages in the relationship with you, perhaps you're coming on too strong, you're getting a little too needy, you're restricting his his ability to live a happy life in some ways being more anxiety than peace, that could be one. The other thing is he could have a parts conflict where he wants a relationship, but then another part of him doesn't want a relationship and he's holding back out of fear. He doesn't want to commit. And the other piece could be that he is perhaps not telling you the truth and that he doesn't actually love you. And he's just keeping you as a friends with benefits or a stringing along kind of situation. So you want to use your intuition a bit to try to determine which one of those it might be. And, it, and when in doubt, look to a man's actions rather than his words to how he truly cares for you. So those are some things I'll say about that. And realize also that a man can be having many internal conflicts, which could be the reason why he's not taking action when he may actually want to be with you or part of him wants to be with you. Realize there's different parts within each man. One part of him could really just be totally in love with you head over heels. Another part could be like, meh, I have to do other things. I have a lot of things going on my plate. I have a career that I'm trying to get off the ground. I'm trying to take it to the next level. And so you have to be realizing that sometimes when you're speaking or interacting with a man, you're only interacting with a part of him. Another part of him could be on a totally different page. And you have to try to see what are those two different parts and maybe even have a conversation with him about that. Say, you know, I notice you say that you love me, but then when I see your actions, it doesn't seem like you actually care. It seems like you're actually wanting to do other things. And what's that about? Like, let's have a conversation. I'm not attacking you, but I'm just authentically curious. You know, what do you want in a relationship? How is this working for you? How are you feeling? Is there something that you're you're wanting that you're not getting? Are there needs that you have that you feel like are not being met? Not just necessarily by me, but in general, like, how are you doing? Check in with him. Try to come from a place of not attacking him and also try to come from a place of not being desperate, but just being authentically curious because, hey, you have standards as well. And if this isn't really working for him, you're going to find a different situation. So that's a powerful frame to come from when you're having that conversation with him. Um, we have another question here for, uh, oh, Mammy said, thanks for answering my questions. I really appreciate it. And thanks for both being on live stream. You're welcome, Mammy. Glad this was helpful for you. Uh, Magali says, I've been with my boyfriend on and off for seven years and I feel kind of bored. How do we get the spark back that we had in the beginning? And how do I know that he loves me? Well, it's interesting because you say you're bored, but then you also want to know if he loves you. So it sounds like you might have a parts conflict as well, where part of you cares for him. Another part of you is actually like, I don't know if he's right for me. So what I recommend is doing a deep dive with him and asking him three questions. How are, how are you feeling? Why are you feeling that way? And what do you want? Ask him those these three questions and deeply listen to his answers. Try to understand him before you seek to be understood. Then share for yourself how you're feeling, 
why you feel that way and what you want. Try to see then if you can get on the same page. You've been in a relationship for seven years. If you're bored, he's probably bored as well. There's something not working. You want to see how can you guys readjust things to get that spark back, to get your needs met, to get that excitement back in that you may both be missing. Maybe you just haven't had that deep conversation yet and having it with him could be the key to start saying, oh, you wanted that? Well, I actually want it. I want to go on more adventures too. I want to go to the to this thing as well. So start to have those deeper conversations and see what you can uncover with that. Do you have anything to say with that, Antia? Well, one thing that jumped out at me was the on and off relationship. So I'm curious how an on and off relationship can get boring, right? Because on and off in and of itself provides variety. So if, if that gets boring to you, that means that's so normal for you, then we got to really talk our friend. You know what I mean? Because that means there's like a massive inconsistency inside of yourself if you're so familiar with on and off and that's like so just familiar normal like just the usual you know what i mean and you know as a matter of fact on and off that happens you know i i get really bored as opposed to being you know more curious and what's really going on or actually saying you know what it, it's time to pull the trigger right maybe there's like just the, you guys are stuck in an undecisiveness uh, pattern and nobody's willing um, to to be like be done with it right because it's just like obviously not working seven years of on and off seven years that's a long time that's seven times 365 days I just want to say that because sometimes like weeks or months can fly by right but we just want to really presence like how long that actually is right and so to actually say that's a very long time to waste your time um, and to really think, why do you want to have a spark back in an on and off relationship? Like, does that mean you want it to be finally on? So then it's maybe not so much about the spark or it's the off happening because it gets boring. So I just have a lot of questions. Um, but yeah, other than that, what Bori said. Okay, awesome. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up one. here, but I wanted to say uh, some shout outs to some other women here. Michelle. Good morning. Happy from uh, watching from Malaysia. Awesome. Welcome, Sharon from New Zealand. Uh, Sink from Australia. Welcome. And then our last question for the night from Dory, is Todd the one? And I'm going to say it, put it out here definitively right now. Yes, Todd <laughs> is the one. He's the one. Go ahead and get married. It's done. Do it. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, Dory, because I don't know the context behind Todd, um, but uh, it's probably the man you're, you're listening to. You might have asked the question before. I, I can't remember, but um, yes. I don't think so. uh, <laughs> yes, he is Anything the one. Like I'll put it out there definitively right now. So awesome. <laughs> Much love. Hope this was helpful for everyone. Leave your comments or questions below and stay tuned for future live streams. We're probably going to be doing one of these next week as well. So get ready for that. I haven't decided what the subject will be and it'll probably be on a similar time, probably a different day. And uh, yeah, we really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure if you haven't yet to take our free love quiz as well at getlovequiz.com to find out what are the solutions for you. What's the best plan to get started for you attracting the man and relationship you want that you can be excited about and cherished and feel secure. So again, getlovequiz.com. We'll try to put a link below here too, maybe up tomorrow. But for now, if you're listening, just go to getlovequiz.com. You'll be able to get that and start it for yourself and get it started on the journey to having the love for free that you want right now. So much love, take care, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.